Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 303. Uh, each week, yeah, we meet here to answer the questions asked on the SEO Questions community on Google+, Plus for as long as it uh, remains there, and uh, also uh, the Dumb uh, SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, with us tonight, we have uh, Masataki Wasa. Masataki is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Uh, he's also a Google top contributor on the uh, Google AdSense community. And uh, Tim Kappa. Uh, Tim is uh, um, CEO of onlineownership.com and he's also a Google top contributor on the Google My Business community. All right, uh, we have 10 questions tonight. Let's look at the first one. Um, this one's not really a question. It's just uh, a statement that Google Plus is shutting down. Do you guys want to make a comment on that? It was good whilst it lasted. Yeah. It shouldn't hamper the rankings, right? And that, there's a question in that. Um, you might lose traffic, but um, your ranking shouldn't be affected. Well, if what they said was true, um, they've always maintained that um, um, a, 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 a listing on Google Plus um, won't benefit rankings. So if, 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 that, if that is all true, then... Um, um, it, it shouldn't um, hamper the rankings. Mm. Yeah, but traffic would be a loss, that's for sure. Mm. Okay, let's um, call that answered and we'll move to the next. Hamanshi Sweet. Hamanshi asks the question What is the best way to get the ranking on first page? This was on Google Plus. Uh, um, Hamanshi said, I want to ask, what is the best way to get the ranking on the first page? Um, when I was a fresher in SEO, in other words, uh, she's new to SEO, please tell her. <coughs> um, yeah, there isn't, there isn't one, just one way. I mean, we could be here all day. I think the best thing for you to do would be to look at Google's own SEO beginner's guide. Um, Moz also has an SEO beginner's guide. Um, and I think, you know, that's two very good, um, you know, bits of uh, homework for you. Thank you, Tim. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Let's hope we can get a, something to get our teeth in. This is interesting. Uh, uh, Kastutis Pazerskis uh, has a question titled, Are backlinks in a PDF, uh, do they count as valid backlinks? Um, he said, goes on to say, backlinks in PDFs and other documents which are available online. Are they as effective as casual web, web page backlinks? Yeah. Um, you know, PDFs are indexed as a, as a, as a normal web page. <laughs> um, often, you know, you can still see PDFs appearing for really highly competitive um, search terms. Um, so they rank in their own right, uh, and if they're if they're citing you, or you know uh, within it, um, then it yes it it counts as a link. Um, yeah. Thank you, Tim. All right. Um, let's move on to the next. Usman Ghani. It's titled, Penalized by Google due to thin content and spammy backlinks. Usman said, Dears, I need guidance. I own a 12-year-old domain 
Um, it's never expired. And in 2012 slash 13, uh, I was penalized by Google due to thin content and spammy backlinks. I tried to recover slowly, disavow links, uh, remove thin content pages. However, uh, I was uh, busy in my job, so I couldn't give much time to the task. But I added some new content as well. Last year, the domain authority was 24 and page authority 31. Today, domain authority 54 and page authority 41. I'm working with my writer to write more content, um, but I'm scared uh, um, to, I'm, I'm hesitant to publish on this domain or buy a new one because I have read on forums and articles that it is better um, not to use uh, a domain once it has a penalty. While in my case, uh, if there is still a penalty, um, why has a domain authority increased? Please suggest. Okay, so firstly, domain authority, I think that's Moz, isn't it? Yeah. So, yep. so like your domain authority has got nothing to do with Google. Uh, that's like a Moz metric. It's made up. It's They've created it out of different things and mashed it all together to give you some kind of domain authority. Um, so that's got nothing to do with do it to, to, to do with that. Um, I'm guessing you never you'd never submitted a um, a, a reinstatement um, you know um, request via search console. I'm assuming you said I'm assuming the penalty came via search console. Um, no, you know if if you've if you've cleaned it up, you know, if, if you've cleaned it up, um, obviously, if it was a manual penalty, then you had the, the option to submit a, re, you know, a, re, a re-inclusion or reinstatement request. Um, and then, um, you know, if, uh, if the spam team feels that you've done enough, then they, they remove that particular penalty. So, you know, um, if you clean it up, you know, you could you could c continue to use that domain. I mean, I don't know what you've got on there. Obviously, this is not a full-time kind of job because you say you work elsewhere. So I, I don't know what the, the, the purpose of the site is. Um, um, so, yeah, look... I think I think it's you know if you've cleaned it up it's it's you know it's it's fine, especially since you said this was twelve years ago. Um, no, no, not not twelve years ago. Oh, know. the domain's twelve years old. Yeah, that's correct. The domain's twelve years old. Yeah, look, you know, if you've cleaned this up, um, the site, you know, it will be fine. Um, I don't know if this is your new, if this is going to be a work. URL. I, I really don't know. I mean, if this is a hobby uh, uh, and as such, you know, because you said you've got other work, I, I don't think um, I don't think it'll be a problem. If, for example, sake, you have um, you have moved, uh, and this is going to be your main kind of project now, I uh, I would probably. If you're starting um, something and this is going to be your main kind of work, I would probably rebrand and you know start from a good strong branding point of view. Shift any decent content you you have you know uh, across and 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 restart fresh. Um, you don't have to do that because you can quite easily recover a a, a site. So you don't have to do that. You can recover a site. But what I'm saying is if you have decided that this is going to be my new job and this is going to be a brand and this is going to be a business I'm going to build, um, and quite clearly it hasn't, you know, you haven't actually started on it, you know, too much yet, then I would new domain and, and start fresh and proper from, from day one. 
but there's nothing wrong if you've properly cleaned up the site using that. Thank you, Tim. Also, I'd like to point out um, the people who answer questions uh, on our Dumb Messiah Questions Facebook group um, through the week. And, and Linda Nair, although I haven't seen him much recently, um, but um, he holds the fort for us on the SEO questions community on Google+. We thank uh, all of those people um, uh, for the help that they give us. All right, let's um, move on to the next. This one is number five of ten. Um, oh, this is a, a comment from uh, Tim Kapper. Um, Google Plus is closing down in ten months. Time to plan uh, an exit strat strategy. Um, did you want to comment further on this one, Tim? Well, I wanted some, you know, I, I wanted some ideas here, uh, something different. Uh, I mean, over the years, I've written on my site quite a few things um, to do with uh, Google+. Plus. Um, so on my own site, not on Google+, Plus, um, that rank pretty well. Has had decent traffic over the years, but obviously that's slowly dwindled. Uh, still got some featured snippets like uh, what's the difference between a a brand page and a you know a Google Plus page, things like that. Um, so the question here is, Google Plus is literally going to be gone. What am I going to do with that content now? Essentially, no one will be searching for it. Well, they might do for a little bit while longer. Um, so I could do the proverbial Google Plus is dead kind of thing, um, update some of the more highly trafficked ones uh, where where it's got a sort of a cross mix of uh, information between uh, the GMB business page and how those disappeared. And <laughs> so I'll probably keep those ones um, because they'll still be informational for at least another year until you know after google plus has gone completely gone then people won't be thinking oh where's this gmb business page um but in terms of the the, the really old google plus stuff um you know tests on plus one buttons and plus one links and uh, all this kind of stuff what do i do you know do i just 404 do i just do i 301 them to the google plus is dead page uh, and I was just saying, does anyone have any great freaking uh, awesome ideas? Apart from the usual 301 or 404. Yeah. Just um, keep me. Just I mean, keep. why not? I mean, the, go ahead, Mr. Tucky. Sorry, uh, why not just keep, keep them? Yeah, I can do. But they're just going to, they're going to, further degrade over time, you know. I mean, let's just say two years after uh, yeah. D-Day. I mean, literally, will anyone actually be fucking <laughs> searching Google Plus? Um, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, you might want to create a page. Um, in, the, in the meantime, while it's being wound down, um, create a page and then perhaps link to it at the top of your existing pages saying for well, the latest yeah you know click here this article is out of date um yeah. you find up-to-date information here that kind of thing at, right at the top of each page yeah so directed yeah. but if people are looking for information that might be old um you still sort of capture that traffic yeah yeah i mean i i said i i expect that there is going to be an increase in search queries around Google Plus stuff, uh, especially now that a lot more people are talking about it. It's going to start becoming a little bit more. And then people, you know, so for a while, it's still going to be relevant. Yeah, yeah, that's true. The uh, Google My Business page, Tim, that, that'll be unaffected, won't it? Yeah, so... <laughs> So the Google My Business page is going to be unaffected. But if you remember when they first brought out Google Plus, 
every Google My Business page had a Google Plus business page attached to it, created and opened and attached. Then, some point, I can't, I can't remember, quite remember where it was. I think it was last year, some, some point, they decided that, I mean, literally there was millions and millions of Google Plus pages, which are now, in effect, have never been used. So what they started doing last year was they started removing or disassociating and removing those Google Plus auto-created pages for the business page. Um, they started deleting them a year ago. Anything that had less than six months worth, six months of activity inactivity on it, they just started deleting them. So they've literally got rid of hundreds of millions of G Plus pages. Um, the G Plus pages, if you kept on using them or were active on them, they weren't closed down and they're still available and accessible. Obviously, now with this, uh, those will all, you know, they will go. But the GMB business page itself, no, no, those are all fine. Cool. All right. Should we have anything more to say on um, this? No, no, no. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. This one from Abindra Raj Dangal. Most of my local citations are not indexed. Uh, Abindra said, uh, I just found out that most of my local citations were not indexed. When I checked the robots tag, um, it uh, does not mention no index. Um, and regarding the sitemap, it does not mention the URL of my local citations. In this scenario, what would you do? Okay, so your local citations are on other sites. Um, and what, you checked the other site, robots text and sitemap. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, local citations, it, it, at the end of the day, it's a freaking massive directory. It's a directory, okay. And essentially only, like anything, the, the highly popular ones um, get visited. Uh, often, um, and Google, you know, obviously uses their sitemap and updates with new with new businesses being listed. Um, you know, places like Yell, Yelp, things like that. But the really third tier, lower, low, low, low directories out there can take months. I mean, six months to a year, even longer before Google even finds this you know, this this um, directory listing somewhere on, on the site. So, you know, there's two things here. <laughs> so there's two things here. And I don't know why George, like, yeah, builds links to them. Oh, man. Okay, yeah, we'll get to that. But this is what you, you kind of need to understand. You've built these, right? You've invested time in these. Um when literally Google just can't be asked to even, you know, they will get to it. They will eventually find them. But it shows you how, how um, you know, un unauthoritative or just uh, the quality of them that Google's just like, yeah, well, <laughs> you know, whatever, mate, we'll get there. It's, it's an indication of the quality of them. Um, and also, I pretty much guarantee you would never, ever, ever get a one spot of traffic out of these things. If Google can't literally be asked to index them, um, they, you know, I doubt you will ever, you know, in the lifetime of your site, ever get one click coming through from those 
to your so i hate to say it but you've pretty much wasted your time on those they're not going to do your site any good whatsoever um if you wanted to i don't know if you have a google plus page <laughs> um before google plus shuts down you can literally create a post and shove every single one of your citation uh you know a link in there to your to to the citations you built um that will help google find them faster the other thing you can do is create a uh, a blog post um just literally chuck every single one of your uh links to your directories in there and publish it google uh, and i'm assuming your content is found and indexed pretty quickly um give that you know sort of a week or two google finds it follows it and then you can remove it um but ideally you, you know you can you can obviously create a page around it this is who we are and this is where you can find us and blah 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 but you know if you wanted to you could literally wait for it to be indexed and then just remove remove the page uh then google's got it they followed the links and you know it'll take them a while but it'll be faster for them to to get those sorted but so, so that's how you can get them to find it quicker. The, the point that I'm trying to make here is, is you've literally come here to say, you know, Google's taking forever to index these. And I'm saying to you now that, you know, the value of those is like nothing. Uh, purely, and, and, and I doubt you'll ever get a click through from those. And it just, it's just an indication of the quality. So, I would, you know, for future for future reference, if you're looking at local citations, um, look at just the top tier aggregators. Most countries have one or two aggregators which feed out to the other top tier, you know, five or six other kind of directories. Uh, and that's pretty much enough. The, the, the next thing that you want to do is look for actual local specific to what you are so you can you can easily search that so i don't know let's say you're you, you're a builder and you can just search uh in you know build a you know um a directory of builders in whatever area you're in and you know nine times out of ten there will be you know some kind of variation whether it be a trade directory specifically to your area or whatever the case may be, that would be good. And then search for like literally local, local specific ones. And apart from that, that's all you really need. You don't need to go down these, these second and third tier um, directories, which never get indexed and will never ever send you traffic. I mean, they are literally worth nothing. Um, even if there's a link there, it's, I'm sorry to say. And then of course, let's say you ever moved your business address. Then you've still got to go and chase down these things. And if you think about it, to, to update your NAP, you update your NAP on one of those things. Let's say you move your business. It's going to take Google another year to find that page again if they ever come back to visit it. I mean, it's literally, yeah, we've indexed this. Uh, we, we might see it again in another five years' time or something. Um, so just think about that. If you ever had to ch update your, you know, your business, any, any of your business details, you're literally going to be sitting waiting a year with with hundreds of these these things which are never being indexed that have been indexed once by google with one one site with one you know nap uh, set of nap um details and now you're sitting another year going oh google please visit this because all my naps you know is completely screwed up so yeah you know best advice look you've already done them so now just you know get them indexed but for future sakes, don't go down the road with stuff like this. You know, they're just, they're not valuable. It's a waste of time. Thank you, Tim. All right, uh, let's um, move on to the next. This one from David Gizzarelli. Um, Do I need to canonicalize each page? He said, I have pages for different cities I service uh, on my ASP.net website, but I'm not sure that Google is listing the pages beyond the default page. Is this where canonicalization comes in? 
Do I need to canonicalize each page, create directories or folders for the unique city pages? Thanks for your input. Well, so what, uh, so is this um, with ASP? It's creating a uh, two ver two versions of the page, is it? No, I mean an ASP page. Um, uh, ASP.net is like an AS ASPX extension. It's it's no different to any other URL. I I mean that uh, I don't think that's relevant. So, okay, I don't understand why I need to canonicalize anything. Um, yeah, the the question slightly unclear. I think that's the issue. So he has different pages for different cities that he serves. Uh, um, he's not sure if Google is listing the pages beyond the default page, and I suppose that means his home page. So I assume that he has a home page, and then he has different pages for each location. But when he searches for his site, we're using the keywords he's targeting um, he's only seeing his home page and none of the location pages I might be wrong but that's how I understood the question I don't think canonicalization helps in this no because what would you canonicalize them to yeah I think I mean, what what is the end game here? <clears throat> I think the end game is to have the different pages for different cities ranking. Well, and it's not a canonicalization or a there's something is something something is wrong somewhere if it's not indexing. I mean, is it indexing other content, other pages? Is it just these specific city pages that it's not indexing? On the flip side of it is how bad are these city pages? Are they all templated? You know, are they ex all exactly the same except for just the different city changed? Um, even saying that, you know, normally those are pretty much ignored. Uh, but I have seen them in low low competitive um, areas still, you know, still ranking. Um, obviously, in the busy, busier cities, they just like, you know, page six. But if it's a tiny little village and you're still using that tactic, it still works. Um, because they've literally, even if they filter you out, you're still on the first page. Um, Yeah, I think I think maybe we need an example. Do, do we have a URL? Uh, I don't suppose we have a URL here somewhere. Jim? Yeah, sorry, uh, uh, mate. Do we by any chance have uh, a URL? Um. Well, I, I think all we can do is ask. I don't know is David's URL. All uh, right. So, well, Dave, I think I think if you just give us a URL and just show us what exactly is happening, because it's a little bit unclear. Yeah, he has asked uh, questions in the past, and, and we've got plenty of time up our sleeve. But let me just have a look on. Let me see your questions. No, um, his name isn't coming up. No, I'm fairly sure we search on that. Um, okay, um, I'll, I'll, I'll add a question on, on the uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group and uh, um, maybe we'll follow this one up next week. Is that okay? Yep. 
Okay, let's go to the next. Sorry about that. I got distracted. I was just looking at Demosia questions on SEMrush and uh, um, we've just just had uh, 551 pages showing up as mixed content. And um, I just wondered what, what had caused that. So I got distracted. Anyway, Karim Aziz uh, is um, asking a question uh, titled Recovery uh, after the latest Google update. Um, Karim said, uh, hey all, I asked this same question uh, in another post, but it's not getting any views, so I thought I would post a new question. Has anyone naturally recovered after the late September, early October Google update um, without any optimizations uh, to their site? I've read online that it might happen and I don't want to make any rush changes that may affect us later down the road. Please share your experiences. Uh, geez, which one was that? I mean, we've had... There's been quite a few updates recently. Um... Um... No, I mean, I've had fluctuations. Um, I, I've certainly had fluctuations. <laughs> However, most of my most of my sites are, are local specific. You know, they have some form of, uh, you know, uh, something to do with local. Um, and what I have noticed, especially after the last one, is that the um, location set has, has been tightened even further. So to give you an example, um, whereas I was ranking a hotel for two locations, one side by side, so you could literally say <coughs> um, the one where they aren't actually located in has, has, has dropped and the one they are area they are located in has increased. So um, for that, Google's tightening up, and I just see that as just a tightening up of that. Um, in terms of the the original fluctuations, um, they all seem to be moving up and down as usual, um, without anything having to be done to them, just apart from the usual usual work. Um, so yeah, I mean, I've seen the the things, but I've seen more in terms of location. But obviously, there's no point chasing chasing stuff like that where you used to be able to rank, but Google's tightened it up literally because you're not in that area. And at the end of the day, when you really think about it, um, if you can't, if you, if you aren't in that area, uh, although it's nice because you know it's like ranking for London hotels. Although it's great, it's real vanity. It's fantastic. Uh, at the end of the day, it's not real, you know, not really helpful if you're, you know, if you're actually, um, you know, 30, 20, 30 miles away. Um, and makes more sense to be ranking or, you know, at least putting more effort into that. So from that, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, I think you need to, to, to look at your site itself, not just your actual keywords, um, just to look at the overall. What I have noticed, uh, if this, I, I don't know what tools you use, um, but what I have noticed is when I was looking at, when you look at these fluctuations, um, when I, you know, look at the domain in SEMrush, and then I look at the at the the lost keywords. So you know, you check your graph, and all of a sudden your graph's gone, poof, and then it starts, and then you think, oh my god, something's gone on. But when you actually dive into the entire thing, 
not just your track keyword into the into like you know all the other ones that they know about um and when you look at lost keywords or declined when you actually look at those it's like they really really incidental things it might be um you know you might have, you might have obviously got a restaurant in the hotel and you might have it had a steak note special and that you know steak note special long gone but the, the page is still there because you updated it's not really a massive page but you've literally dropped for steak night special i'm like okay uh yeah fine that's cool i don't mind dropping for that because it just doesn't you know you know what i mean um so that's what i found when i initially started looking at all these changes and you look at actual pages or the actual positions that are dropping they they are so incidental that they're not actually trafficked pages in that sense so I'm not fussed with those, but every site is going to be different. And I think you need to, you know, you need to, I mean, before you do any work, you need to kind of understand what's dropped, what's, what hasn't dropped before you make any knee jerk reaction. Uh, you should never make knee jerk reactions. Um, at least give it a couple of weeks, even a month, uh, and keep an eye on things, see, see, see what's happening and then analyze it and then make a decision. Thank you, Tim. All right, um, let's move on to the next, will we? Okay. This one from Christian uh, Ray Leno. Um, Christian said, uh, it's, uh, the question is titled, pros and cons for a .org domain from an SEO point of view. Um, he, Christian said, I, I have, I've chosen a domain, or I have to choose a domain uh, for a non a non government uh, organisation. Are there any pros and cons for a domain .org from an SEO point of view, uh, or should I go with the .ro? Um, that would be Romania, I guess, um, because the website will only be in Romanian. The price for the domain is the same. Thanks in advance. So that's the question. Should he use .ro or .org? My suggestion would be to use uh, .ro. Um, that, that will give him um, uh, targeting on, on um, Romanian um and also uh, recognizability um, from the, from the users they'll recognize it as as a site from their own country um things yeah def yeah definitely i mean <coughs> i would do it a uh, uh, Mm, but it's an NGO. Uh, people know that it's kind of uh, .org is for an organisation. Um, mm, I mean, if, if but on the flip side, it's only going to be in Romanian, so therefore it doesn't really matter. Um, what about doing domain? See if you can get the domain domain .ro. And then uh, on the dot org, <laughs> uh, that uh, yeah. Um, no, in this case, I would probably say for me, I would just do the dot ro. You're not in any other languages. Um, yeah, but on the flip side, dot org is I don't. Uh. Well, you'd you'd buy both of them <laughs> um, to cover both bases. Uh, the question is which one to use as a part of your branding scheme. And so long as it, the content's in Romanian and the site targets remain Romanian, so um, the, the donors to this, say, um, NGO, if they're predominantly from Romania, for example, then I would use dot, dot .ro because it makes sense because as an organization, it is active and to a certain extent contained within the country. 
in that case, I think that .ro makes much more sense than .org. Yeah, because .org could be anywhere in the world, couldn't it? Yeah. So the reverse is that if, let's say, you are, if the if you're targeting people across the world, or let's say donors are spread across the world, then .org might make more sense. But given the description, I think I would um, prefer .ro in this case. But obviously, you you'd secure both versions of the domain. Yeah. All right, I think that's a fair answer for Christian. Um, let's um, move on to our last question for the evening, or at least I think it's the last question. We'll soon find out. Ashok Panda. Um, Ashok said, has the August 2018 medic update affected your site? That's the title. Uh, he goes on to ask, is anyone working in the healthcare niche? Uh, how has the August 2018 medic update affected your clients or your site? Thanks in advance. Um, I've seen uh, a, a large proportion of recovery. Um, of over three quarters of the um, the original. Uh, positions um, that was for a, a surgeon, but um, and I don't have any other sites to 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 base it, uh, to, you know, so I can only go by that one. Um, the only thing we did update it to that site because there was a speculation on the whole eat EAT. Um, and no doubt we're going to see a lot more of that becoming a new buzzword. Uh, because of the speculation on that, I did uh, list a lot of the, you know, the, the lot of the studies, the research, the research papers. We put that all onto the site, made sure it was it, it was found, um, and we're still working on a bit more brand building at the time, uh, or as as we go along now, but. Um, yeah, I th I think it's uh, I think it's recovering. I think it's you know it's not service as normal, uh, but it's certainly improving. Thank you, Tim. All right, uh, I I think that um, it covers that question. And yes, it is. That is our last question for the night. We've done it again. We've answered all of the questions asked on the uh, SEO questions community on Google Plus, and uh, also the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. We'll be back uh, at the same time next week uh, to do this uh, all again. Um, but um, in the meantime, we, we thank you very much for your interest. Uh, your participation makes what we do here worthwhile. We are truly grateful for that. All right, um, I'm going to click this button and hopefully uh, 